Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to my coffee film tag. Yeah, that's right. I have been tagged to do the coffee film tag. And who was the one that tagged me? It is none other than Mighty Mega Man 9, aka Tim, who is a very nice guy, and this is a long overdue tag actually because he actually tagged me back in December. And this is my first official tag here on my channel, so I figured why not. I do have another tag coming up, but in the meantime, I wanna focus on this tag and I'll focus on the other tag whenever I have a chance to do that one. So let's get into the first question. So the first question is Black Coffee, a film that isn't easy to get into, but has hardcore fans. Okay. This is a film that came out back in 2012, and I know a lot of people love this film. And that's cool if you love this film, but personally, my choice for Black Coffee is The Master. I hated that movie. Like, I hated it with a burning passion. And I do appreciate artsy films. There are some good artsy films out there that I can really appreciate. I can respect Paul Thomas Anderson's passion for the master, but personally I thought it was so boring. I couldn't really get into Joaquin Phoenix's character. I hated his character. I really did not give a shit about his character. Philip Seymour Hoffman definitely had the best character in the film. In fact, his character is what helped me get through the boredom that is the master. I can understand where the film was trying to go with its meanings. I do understand it. It's not a matter of me hating the film because I didn't understand it. I understood it fine. It just didn't connect with me. I really was so bored and by the end of the film it honestly felt pretty pointless because of where the film ended with Joaquin Phoenix's character. That's all I remember from the master. It bored me to freaking death. A lot of people love that film, I know that, but me personally, I hated The Master and that's my black coffee. Peppermint Coffee, favorite Christmas holiday film. Now, I have plenty of favorite um, holiday films, but the one I'm personally going to go with is The Polar Express. Not only is The Polar Express one of my favorite animated movies of all time, but it is one of my favorite holiday films of all time, and it is actually my favorite animated film of 2004, personally. The Polar Express was the definition of being pure movie magic like it brought movie magic and that's thanks to robert zemeckis and the talents of tom hanks and everyone else involved in their motion capture i know people have complaints about the kids looking creepy and all but honestly i didn't have a problem with that i thought the kids looked great for the animation that it was something to step into the next level for the animation genre which i really appreciate that robert zemeckis even did and he totally succeeded i love the polar express to death it's a movie i can rewatch over and over again hell even sometimes it's not even the christmas time and i'll even rewatch the polar express because that's how much i love the film i love the story i love the world it built it gets me into the holiday spirit. I love Tom Hanks. I love a couple of the musical numbers that are there. The movie is just filled with heart and joy. It has one of the best scores I've ever, ever heard in my life. It has one of the best endings ever in my life, in my opinion. I loved everything about the Polar Express. I really do mean that. Everything about the film, I freaking adored and that's why I picked that as my favorite holiday film. Like I said, there's other ones, but man, Paul Express, I just had to pick it for this one because oh, I, I really love that film. That's all I'm gonna say. Hot Chocolate, favorite children's film. Okay, for favorite children's film, um, you know, there's a lot of choices out there. Just so you guys know, I'm not someone that has like an all-time favorite because it's hard for me to choose. But one of my favorites I'm actually going to go with is the classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Man, 
this is a definition of a children's classic, but really I would say it's more of a family classic because I do think it's a film that the entire family can really enjoy. If you honestly have never seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, I seriously recommend it. It's a wonderful film to watch. It has memorable and amazing musical numbers. I really love the chocolate factory that was built. You know, for the time, I love the chocolate factory. I just really like the set designs in the film. The characters were all fantastic. I love the characters. I love the performances in this film. Honestly, this is just one of those films that, like what I said with the Polar Express, it's honestly movie magic. It's a film that I really don't get tired of watching. It does have some creepy stuff for the kids, but I think overall it is a film that the entire family can enjoy. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it's seriously a freaking classic and I'll choose that one for at least one of my favorite children's films. The next one is Double Espresso, film, a film that held my interest the entire time. All right. So the film that held my interest the entire time is Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979. That is a slow burner film. And I know some people consider that film slow and I could see why like it does drag for people. For me personally, even if the film was slow, I was never bored. Honestly, Alien is one of those films where my attention was held from the beginning to the end because of the world that really Scott built. The characters were all fantastic. The movie is very suspenseful. It honestly keeps me at the edge of my seat. I'm honestly just so immersed into the storyline. Really, Scott, what he did with that film is honestly just truly mesmerizing. It is one of the best films I've honestly ever seen. Of course, Sigourney Weaver and everyone else in Alien. It's just fantastic. And the pacing, although slow, it is highly, highly engaging in my opinion and that's honestly how you make a suspense slash horror film. Next one is Double Espresso, a film you've watched more than any. Okay, so there's a lot of films I watch, so that's a tough one for me, like I re-watch, but one of the films I do see myself watching a ton is Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo is one of my favorite anime films of all time. It's one of my favorite Pixar films of all time because in general, it's just such a phenomenal animated film. Everything about Finding Nemo from its opening scene to the ending to the events you see the characters in, it's honestly just so freaking beautiful. The animation has so much detail. There's, it has some of the most detailed stuff you could ever see, honestly, in animation history. The animation still holds up to this day. It's fantastic what the filmmakers had to do to make Finding Nemo in terms of the animation. But in terms of the story, it's amazing. Characters are great. The score is fantastic in the film. It's just so beautiful and it just has an amazing father-son storyline. So honestly, Finding Nemo is one of those films I see myself, one of those films I see myself re-watching a ton. The next one is is Hipster Coffee Shop. Give an indie film a shout out. There's so many I could give a shout out to, but the one I'm gonna give a shout out to is The Place Beyond the Pines, the best film of 2013 in my opinion. Derek C. in France, who also directed Blue Valentine, a film I appreciated, but was only a one-time watch for me personally. The Place Beyond the Pines is freaking incredible. Now sure, is this a depressing film? Yes, it's a very depressing film. I can see how some people can't really watch this film, but the thing that makes The Place Beyond the Pines a rewatchable film, unlike Blue Valentine, is that at least The Place Beyond the Pines has hope. Like there's some kind of hope in the film, whereas Blue Valentine, that film has no hope at all. But 
Why I'm giving this film a shout out is because I think it's an incredibly directed and incredibly written film. It is a three act structure film where each act tells a different story but they all connect somehow. And it's honestly brilliant how this film did it. I loved how the first act was one story, the second act is a, is a different story, and then the third act is a different story. And it's honestly brilliant. The performances are great. Ryan Gosling gives honestly one of his best performances of his career. Same thing goes to Bradley Cooper, who at that time, you know, he was barely getting started into giving more of these dramatic performances and he really succeeded. Other talents like Eva Mendes, Ray Liotta, all the other talents were seriously fantastic here. I love the score. I love the cinematography of the film. Just the filmmaking in The Place Beyond the Pines is great. And it just has these deep messages about your actions, how you can feel guilty for your actions, the consequences you have to face because of your actions. There's a lot of deep meaning to The Place Beyond the Pines that I just love and admire so much. It's why it's personally my favorite film of 2013. And it's why I have to give this indie film a shout out. And if you haven't seen this film, I seriously do recommend watching it. The next one is Oops Got Decaf, a film you expected more from. One of the films I had a lot of anticipation for. It came out back in 2011. It was directed by, personally, uh, what I think is one of the best directors working today. And that's honestly Super 8. Super 8 was honestly so incredibly disappointing. Okay, you have J.J. Abrams directing this film, um, Steven Spielberg producing this film, um, of course not directing, but he is producing, so he's working with J.J. Abrams, and the concept honestly look terrific. The trailers are honestly some of the best trailers I've seen this past decade of Super 8. I'm serious when I say that. So you can imagine my excitement back in 2011 when I came into this film. I couldn't wait to see it. and. Oh my god, wow, what happened in this film? Like, okay, I, didn't I don't think it's terrible. I just think it's a very disappointing film. You know, there's good things like, you know, the visual effects look great. It's still a very well-directed film by J.J. Abrams. It did have some interesting things going on, but man, the film overall, I remember honestly being pretty uneven. I haven't seen this film since 2011 when I saw it in theaters, but I just remember being very disappointed coming out. The kids, I remember annoying me like all hell where they just keep cussing and cussing. And I get it. Kids do that now these days. I know J.J. Abrams said that he wanted to present how kids are now these days, but with characters like these kids that were in here, oh man, I just wanted to, I just wanted to punch those kids right across the freaking face. They annoyed me to heck. I remember just feeling the storyline being lost, and then once the movie got to the ending, it didn't make the payoff very worth it. I know people enjoyed the ending, and I can understand why, but to me personally. Oh, the ending was so underwhelming. Super 8 is one of those films I expected so much more from. Like, so much more. And it became a huge disappointment. Just to be clear, I don't think it's a terrible film. I just think it's a very, very disappointing film. Perfect Blend. A film that was bitter and sweet, but still left you satisfied. So for this one, I went ahead and chose Little Miss Sunshine. The film with Abigail Breslin, you know, back when she was an adorable little girl, and now she's grown up to be, in my opinion, a very attractive and beautiful looking young woman. And then you have Steve Carell, Greg Kinnear, Tony Collette, Alan Arkin. You have a great cast here. And honestly, Little Miss Sunshine, when I really look at that film, it has a nice blend of having your funny moments and it does have its dramatic moments so I guess in this case it does have a blend of bitter moments 
but it does have a great blend of sweet moments at the same time because there are honestly a lot of sweet moments like this family is very dysfunctional and you know they don't know how to really interact with each other but the fact that this entire family is willing to drive far 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 away just to take little miss sunshine abigail breslin to that beauty pageant you know it just shows that no matter what no matter how tough of a time your family gives you, you're all still going to be a family and you're still going to be there for each other no matter what. That's the message I personally got from Little Miss Sunshine. It's a great film and it did leave me satisfied. It is a very satisfying film even when it was bitter in part and sweet in some parts. When it all came together and it ended, I was honestly very satisfied and I find it to be honestly a very rewatchable film for that reason. I've seen this film maybe at least a good four times now and I honestly love it each time I watch it. So that's my choice, Little Miss Sunshine. Coffee with Your Sugar, a film that you might love a little too much. <clears throat> okay, this film is honestly recent. This film came out a couple of years ago. It's my favorite film of that year, Interstellar. I love that film a lot. What Christopher Nolan accomplished in Interstellar. Holy crap. It blows my mind every time I rewatch this movie. There's a reason it's my favorite film until the 14th, because it just blows my mind. And I love it more and more and more when I rewatch it. I do think it's a cinematic masterpiece. It is an achievement. And it is one of the best sci-fi films I've ever had the great pleasure to experience in my life. Just holy shit. And this movie left me a lot of questions. It really made me think about life, about my future. Like this is a very thought provoking film. It's very ambitious. Christopher Nolan was in line back in 2014 when he said it was going to be his most ambitious film and it definitely absolutely is. The performances from Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, etc, etc. Everyone's fantastic in the film. Cinematography is gorgeous. The direction is just absolutely fantastic and whew, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Oh, hell yeah. All right, you guys, now it's time for the final question. And this one is, friends don't let friends drink Starbucks. Okay, and that means a movie you tell others to avoid. Movie 43. Now, I did do a review for this on my channel, if you ever wanna check it out. I did give this half a star out of four just mainly because Terrence Howard's um, plot, that actually did make me laugh. I'm not going to lie. Terrence Howard's uh, skit made me laugh, and I give the film credit for that. But even with me giving it half a star out of four, you guys, even with that one positive I did give the film, I still consider it one of the worst movies of all time. Even if it's not straight up zero, some of the films I do give half a stars to, I can still consider one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and that's movie 43. This movie is, it's not even bad. It's not even awful. It's just a complete abomination to movies, to R-rated movies. This, this is an example of R-rated raunchy movies gone wrong. This is a perfect example of how not to do an R-rated raunchy film. This film was clearly trying to be raunchy for the sake of raunchy and it just didn't work. It falls flat. I mean really, Hugh Jackman with balls on his neck? <laughs> oh. And then Chris Pratt having shit all over the car when, um, you know, the car hit him. Oh. If it weren't for a scary movie five, 
honestly being my worst. Like if Scary Movie 5 never have existed in 2013, Hands down, movie 43 would have been my worst movie of 2013. This movie just sucks to a whole new level of suck. Movie 43 is just one of those movies where, even though I don't really do it in reality, if I have to, I would have to say it's one of those movies I would tell others to not see. I know some people that saw this movie and they could only handle the first five or ten minutes and they just flat out shut off the movie. And you know what? I freaking don't blame them for just shutting off the movie after the first five or ten minutes. It's not worth seeing through the rest of the movie and just being completely depressed because, you know, I love movies. I love going to the movies and when I see movies like this, it just downright depresses me and really angers me as someone that truly loves movies. Well you guys, that is my coffee film tag. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Thanks again to Mighty Mega Man 9 for tagging me to do this. Please check him out, you guys. He does uh, cool things on his channel. He does movie reviews, he does snack talk, he does horror talk. He does all kinds of stuff on his channel. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. And because this is a tag video, there's gonna be just a few people I'm going to tag. So the following people I'm tagging to do the coffee film tag are WWE fan 0599, Adam Haskell, Brian Sudfield, and Justin Watches Movies. Those are the guys I am tagging to do the coffee film tag. In the comments down below, uh, give me your answers for these if you want to. And even if you aren't tagged, if you want to do your own video for this, you know, feel free. Even share the link with me and I'll even watch your video if you want me to. This is Twice to Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!